Hey guys, welcome back to the Foolish Show. Of course, I am Foolish Phil. Just watched Michigan lose their season finale, 85-70 to versus Nebraska. Nebraska obviously had something to play for, double by. Michigan having senior day, so you had a little bit of emotion and you saw a little bit of that overflow in the game as uh, some texts were called and some such, some frustration. You have Terrence Williams the second, and now Burnett and Llewellyn were honored, I believe, before the game as playing their last games in the Michigan uniform. So, I mean, you appreciate that they came, they came to Michigan and tried their best. I mean, it's not like they tried to be a bad team. So, I thank the players for representing Michigan however they did, and, uh, you know, it's they put in the time and the effort. It just didn't pay off. What we saw this year was Michigan with the worst record I can ever remember. And it goes back, I believe, to 1966-67 where Michigan was uh, the last time they finished last in the Big Ten. They have one more game to lose. However, they play in the opener of the Big Ten tournament. And they'll lose that game and they'll most likely finish 8-24 and on the year. What, what has happened to this team is... So many questions. I don't know if there's really any answers. It just leads me questions. It, I just don't understand how this team can be so good in the first half and so bad. But it makes me think, I've said this in other videos, is it because the team doesn't have conditioning? Do they get tired? Now again, remember that Sanderson, the strength and conditioning coach, had the fallout with Juwan Howard. Now, that doesn't mean... You know, Michigan has had a terrible time of closing out games under Howard's reign, but not being blown out. The broadcast today said that Michigan has the worst, second worst, second worst of all Power 5 teams in the nation in second half scoring. They didn't say who was number one. But, you know, Michigan just does terribly. Again, they were in the game relatively 50 to 43 at half. They lose by 15 points. So it's like, they again, they lose another eight points there in the second half. It could have been more, too, but, you know, Nebraska just pulled their starters out with a couple minutes to go, and Michigan put in their subs and such, and there you go. So, is that a factor that their strengthening condition coach was upset about what Michigan was doing and his departure from the team impacted them? I, I think that might be a factor. You also all have to, so, I mean, is that a Howard thing? Because... Sanderson and Howard apparently got into that verbal spat, whatever degree of it. Howard apparently lost his temper. Of course, I only read one side of the ish of the concern. But for a for a person who was supposed to have zero tolerance, it's interesting that he wasn't fired for this. Um, so that's one just one issue possibly. Another issue you could easily say is McDaniel and his uh, academic suspension. Michigan went 0 and six on the road without Doug McDaniel. I think they averaged 14 points less per game without McDaniel. Today he started off on fire, 17 points in the first half, 5 of 6 from 3, second half 0 points. Again, conditioning. He was limited to, I think, 15 practice hours a game and practice hours a week. Well, you know, a game takes 3 hours. You can't practice on, you can't prep, practice and all that on road games, so Definitely that impact of the continuity of the team. You never got a chance to really play Llewellyn and uh, Doug. They're both short guys, so I don't know how much they would have played together, but they didn't play much together. That goes on Howard, because he had zero depth on this bench. I mean, the only guy who would even come off would be Cheddar. The guy who was even a remote threat to do anything was Cheddar. I mean, I like Cheddar and his effort, but, you know, it's like, this is, I believe, year four, yeah, year four of Juwan Howard, and you have no bench. Just think about this for a second. A couple years back, when he had Houston and Diabate and Bufkin, I believe it was, and Cheddar, and I'm thinking there's one other guy, I can't remember his name, but they were like the, I think, I think there was a class, maybe one more that I'm forgetting, was the number one class in the country, something like that, at least top two, three, four, top, right? How far this team has fallen. They, they missed, Last year they missed the tournament. They go to the NIT and flame out like the way they lost so many games uh, that year. This year they flame out completely and don't even make any tournament. 8-23. and 23. There's a guy on Twitter I saw. He's like, if Michigan 
ran the table in the Big Ten tournament. You know, just for the sake of it, just for the sake of argument. They win the whole Big Ten tournament. Where would they be seated? And honestly, I would have to say it's 16 and playing in a play-in game. Because they, they wouldn't deserve anything better than that. So, I mean, this team is just dreadful. And I'm just going to go back and say, how could Michigan keep Juwan Howard? I love him as the Fab Five representative. I love how he mentors these kids, I guess. It's like a father figure to them. They seem to love him, but he doesn't know how to coach. He doesn't know how to coach. Maybe that's another reason why the second halves are so bad. The coaches make adjustments, and Howard makes no adjustments. Or the players don't execute them. I don't know what it is. Is it the coach doesn't know what he's doing or the players can't execute the plays? I don't know. All I do know is I think it's really, really, really stupid and foolish and a big mistake that Ward Manuel is going to apparently keep the worst record basketball coach at Michigan in almost 50 years. You're going to keep him around? I look at the trajectory. With Beeline's players, like, you know, Elite Eight made it to the Final Four lost, right? Then it was like Sweet 16. Then I think uh, maybe that one was a, kind of like a, a surprise year, but they beat, you know, um, Tennessee, I think, and they beat, like, Colorado State, so made the Sweet 16. Like, cool, all right, you know, unexpected. Then you miss the tournament, and now you don't even make a tournament. That trajectory is going down, down, down. Why would you keep this guy? Look, Northwestern with Collins, they're a good team. Why can't you get Collins to Michigan? Pay him some money. I think it's Hoiberg, I think is his name, at Nebraska. He's got them. They were expected to be a 12 seed and in the Big Ten. Picked a 12, finished 12th. They got a double bye. So they're going to be in top four. I think they're going to finish number three in the conference. I'm just saying, you can do better. I know NIL at Michigan's not going to get it not going to do it, not going to get the top-notch guys because Michigan will not do pay-for-play. But are you thinking they're doing that at Northwestern? Are you thinking they're really doing pay-for-play at Nebraska? So why can't you go off and get a coach that knows how to coach? You know, it's nothing wrong to have a Doug McDaniel and Tara Sweet guys who are not going to be lottery picks, not going to be early NBA draft guys like Houston and Diabate and Howard were. And and even Buffkin, he went after, like, I think it was two years. It's fine to, you know, recruit guys who are going to be there for you, like Cheddar, who's going to be around, if he sticks, doesn't portal, you know, for four years and build around those guys. Nothing's wrong with that. You don't need to have these star players that, you know, ditch you after one year. You don't even get to any get any real fruit of it. So I think that's where a mistake, again, where Howard went after the stars and they didn't pan out worth anything. Honestly... Of Diabate, Howard, and Buffkin. The only one that was actually any good is Buffkin. The other guys just got drafted on potential along with Jet Howard. I mean, those four guys were all like stars supposedly at Michigan. Buffkin's the only one that was any good because he actually played some defense and he could score. Well, like I said, if I was Ward Manuel, if I was the AD, I would have fired Howard a month ago at least. You know, 3 and 17 in the Big Ten, and you're keeping your job. I don't know what, what what's the turnaround going to be that says, oh, we saw progress. Howard's get, get doing the right thing. We're making progress. I don't know, like 10 wins in the Big Ten? That'd be, honestly, that'd be a seven game improvement. Okay. Set so 10 and 10 in the Big Ten is pretty good. So, I mean, that's not realistic at all. So, what, five or six wins in the Big Ten is an improvement? And then Howard Key gets. Another extension after this one? I, I just don't see why you would keep to keep them around. It's a failed experiment. It's kind of like when you go from a legend to the next guy. It usually doesn't work so well. A few times it does, but if you think you go from the legend to the next guy, it's just, usually there's a drop-off. Beeline, Michigan legend, played great under him, great coaching, and he got guys and developed them, Right? Howard took over and crash. Just what it is. So I don't know why you keep him around. It's like he's the he's the fall guy, right? He's the guy who replaced the legend. They're never going to live up to the expectations because you're expecting him to keep the ball rolling. So 
<laughs> Sidebar to that. Will Sharon Moore be able to keep the ball rolling with, you know, after taking over for Jim Harbaugh? I don't know, having to replace all the defensive coaching staff. So I guess you can say one thing, at least he's, you know, has clearly changed things up, right? Because then he had to change all the other things along the team, too. <sighs> one more game to lose, and then it's done. Hey, guys, <laughs> thanks for watching. Michigan basketball is not fun to watch, so hope my video gave you some insight again. It's just a mess. The team's in the game and then loses the second half. Just what it is. Hey, as always, if you have any comments, put them in the box below. Until I see you next time, as always, though, go blue.